discuss ahead, including the president's confession about his new life in the White House. Remember how he used to say the job would be so easy? He's got a new take on that now. The most trusted name in news. In a revealing new interview with Reuters, President Trump says being president is more work than his previous jobs. He thought it would be easier. Now, he may be the only one surprised that being president is harder than being a reality TV host or running a real estate company, but it really does appear he thought being president would be easy. He said it over and over again during the campaign. We're going to make America great again. It's going to be easy. It's going to be easy. It's very easy to be presidential. I have great people. We have top, top smart people. But it's so easy to do. We have drugs. We have debt. We have empty factories. That's going to end. That's going to end. So easy. So easy to solve. Believe me, the jobs are coming back, folks. That's going to be so easy. This is so easy. I want to jumpstart America. And it can be done. And it won't even be that hard. Folks, I'm going to do so much about it. It's going to be so easy. It's going to be so easy. You know, being presidential is easy. Much easier than what I have to do. All right, so now on the verge of his 100th day as president, which is tomorrow, President Trump said this to Reuters. I loved my previous life. I loved my previous life. I had so many things going. I, I, I actually, this is more work than in my previous life. I thought it would be easier. I thought it was more of a... I'm a details-oriented person, I think you would say that, but I do miss my old life. This, I like to work, so that's not a problem, but this is actually more work. Turns out it's more work. Back now with the panel joining the conversation, Trump biographer Michael D'Antonio. You know, David Chalian, first to you, he says, I thought it would be easier. He's just 99 days in. Yeah, I... I'm not surprised that the jo he finds the job, John, to be something different maybe than he thought it was going to be. I think that's probably true for most presidents. It is such a unique job. It's impossible to really understand what it is in until you're there, I think. So I'm not surprised that his perceptions have been altered. I am a little surprised to hear in his voice in that Reuters interview a sort of longing or yearning uh, or at the very least making a, a clear preference for his former life. That is not something I have ever heard from a president, not certainly a hundred days into the into the president. And I do want to get to that in just a moment, but Jeffrey Lord, first to the issue of this is something that all presidents go through, and my one regret tonight is I don't have a bite for Ronald Reagan to play for you, Jeffrey, on this subject, because I'm sure it exists. I can give you a President Kennedy story. <laughs> but, but, no, but let me give you a President Obama story, which is one you'll like also. Let's listen to what President Obama said about how the job may be a little bit different than he thought. I am surprised compared to where I started when we first announced for this race uh, by uh, the number of critical issues that appear to be coming to a head all at the same time. With President Trump, though, Jeffrey, it was supposed to be different. Part of the allure of then Donald Trump was he was an executive. This was all going to be different for him. He was going to take a different approach to government, and as he said, it, it, it would be easier. Isn't that the promise? Well, I, I, I do think that all presidents go through this. And I, when they're candidates, I think they really do believe that, all of them. Um, I, the, the Kennedy story I was talking about was after the Bay of Pigs, which was a disaster. JFK in office only, you know, until April when that happened, summoned of all people Richard Nixon, whom he defeated the previous November, and said to him, among other things, you can take this blank, blank job. Harry Truman used to call the White House the big white jail. I mean, once they get there, they do find it's a little different than they imagine it to be. And I think President Trump, as number 45, is no different. Well, he, although a lot of other presidents, you know, FDR, Teddy Roosevelt, others, you know, made clear that they loved the job and they relished the oh, work. Oh, I, I, I think and, he'll love it, too. And, and Michael D'Antonio, to I your do. point, to, to the point that David Challion was making, Michael, there was this wistful, forlorn tone in a way that, that, that President Trump seemed to be talking about his former life. Well, you're right. And I think that if he had read a few biographies of presidents before he ran for president, he'd have had an idea that it's a really, really hard job. And I know that he loved his previous life. When he ran for president, he talked a lot about, well, I don't need this job. I'm not getting paid to do this campaign. It's really hard, and, and his previous life involved a lot of repetition. He was essentially making deals in the same way over and over again, 
And as President Obama noted in your clip, this job in the White House throws something big and new at you every single day. And I don't think he looks happy. Though he may day. become happy in this job, but he, he'll, he's not happy right now. You can tell. You know, Maggie, you spent some time with him. I mean, he talks about missing driving. Uh, uh, among other things. You know, he talks about being in the bubble. He talked in the interview with Fox News about the fact that he can't come back to New York as much as he likes. Well, it's interesting. I was thinking about this as we were talking before. You know, his first trip back to New York City is going to be next week. Um, and he's expected to stay here for that weekend. Uh, some of us have expected he would be here sooner than that because those of us who have covered him for a long time and I think people who talk to a lot of people who are close to him uh, know what a homebody he is and know how much he, does, he did love his life. Uh, he does love Trump Tower. Uh, he does love New York City. And I think there was a concern about the protests, which are going to be, I suspect, pretty organized and inevitable for that first trip. Um, but he did sound to be voicing something that I think everybody expected that he was going to be feeling, just not necessarily wearing quite so visibly. Uh, when he talked about the driving, I've never known him to be a, a large driver of himself, um, although I know there was this Instagram video that his wife posted at some point a couple of years ago. But I just think it was representative of control. And if you think about the type of job that he had before in his old life, he didn't have a boss. He hasn't had a boss for decades. And this is the first kind of job where he actually has to go and be accountable to somebody other than himself, uh, and it's very difficult. I, I will say that the, the President of the United States is one of those jobs for which the job description is readily available, uh, and, and that most yeah. of the people who get involved, I know they're all daunted, I know they're all daunted I when they get to the White House, but I think fair. it's fair to expect that the job will be hard. I think it is fair to say that he is not somebody who spent the amount of time thinking about what he would do with the job or what it actually would be like as we have seen previous presidents do but I do think you have to get to concede that they all come in a little bit sure. you know and, uh, cowed by and that's what we play the for President Obama right. one other part of the past David Chalian that President Trump uh, doesn't seem to want to let go of and rejoices in repeatedly is the election uh, from November 8th. He recounted the story on stage today uh, in front of the NRA. Apparently during many of these media interviews, which he said he's pulled out a map of the United States, the electoral map of the United States, to show the red counties, uh, you know, the people who voted for him. He did it in a discussion with Reuters when he was talking about China. Uh, what do you make of this? It's odd because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that interview took place inside the Oval Office. So it's not like anyone's confused that he won the election because he's sitting behind the desk in the <laughs> Oval Office. So it, 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 is, it is this, um, I, I think it hampers him a little bit. I really do to be, I get it. I mean, that was an amazing victory. He should be incredibly proud of it. He is, he has every right to be. But I think hanging on to it in, in this way hampers him, and it's what we've seen in the polls all along, John, in this first 100 days, from growing beyond just the level of support that he had from the people that voted for him on election day. He really, I, I would imagine, would want to grow to a majority support to get a bigger governing majority going forward for his agenda. All right, guys, thanks so much. Just